look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? Beautiful color changing backlit keys and the shiny things has the cherry keyboard. Nice big 17 inch display that the camera, it can't even handle it. It's like, what's happening? This is too pretty. I can't focus on it. Finally, a new laptop. This thing is a beast of a laptop. I know, gardening channel. We'll do plant things. Really just trying to get the ball rolling because I need some footage to edit to test out the laptop to get things moving for this week's videos. This is the MSI Titan GT77. It has 64 gigs of RAM. That's so much RAM. Two terabyte SSD 3080Ti graphics card. It's just a, this thing, it is a beast. Look at it. It's freaking huge. This thing's mess. Look at the power brick. That's insane. It somewhat defeats the purpose, in my opinion, of having a laptop when things are this big and bulky, but I don't mind it and I need a workstation that I can move around and take various places. The lid goes up and down very nicely and smoothly, doesn't bend or wobble. I need to get a little slidey thing for the webcams. I don't like those. That shouldn't be there. People might be watching. Has everything I wanted in a new laptop, except it doesn't have a touch screen. I know you would think, not necessary, right? But I got so used to the touch screen on the XPS that I keep finding myself like touching the screen, thinking something's going to happen, but nope, that's, nothing's gonna happen. It's nice. I know most of y'all don't care, but it's been a topic for a couple of weeks. So for those of you who do care, here we are. I was going to go with the MSI uh, Raider GE76 which is i mean it's it's pretty close to being what this is but i just couldn't find that one in stock with the 4k display and uh, 64 gigs of ram i could find variations of it but not what i needed as far as ram goes or what i wanted as far as the ram goes but this is what i was able to find in stock I ended up having to go fancier than i had planned on but that's okay at least i can get back to work and get that ball rolling finally so excited about it very nice also i'm gonna have a computer with two working speakers on it what the dell the xps speakers on it one of them crapped out like a month into having it and dell was just like oh we don't know too bad that put a bad taste in my mouth with dell but any other issue i had with it they were actually pretty good about handling uh up to this point where it was just an outdate we don't need to go into all that the magnolia the little gem are y'all sick of listening to me talk about this thing yet I need to get this planted sometime this week later in the week it's supposed to actually like be record-breaking heat like upper 90s maybe mid 90s for a while the area that it's going in is um congested one might say in here yeah there's a not a lot of space to work with it's going to go right right around here i want to have it as close to centered under this peak as possible, but I'm not gonna be able to get it too perfectly centered because I think there's an old stump under there. Another reason I didn't go with like a massive tree because there wouldn't be a lot of room to dig there. It's that none of that, I want it, we need to, it's time to pick some pumpkins. Don't you think, I me? Mean, look at these things. The vines are looking terrible. They look like garbage. Most of the pumps on there are ready to harvest. You can see them down in there, see them? But you know, these have the, they're all covered in the powdery mildew and everything, I'd rather just get them out of here and be done with them. So I'm going to grab my clippers and get y'all up on a tripod and start picking some pumps. Here's an update that y'all didn't know that I had forgotten to give you, my clippers. I've talked about these for a couple of years, so they are my absolute favorite clippers, but haven't been able to tell you much else about, excuse me, hello, you here to work? There we go. Haven't been able to say much about them other than I really like them because they uh, didn't have the name on them. I'd gotten them at Home Depot yeah, I think in 2020, and they're my favorites. I test them up against the Felcos. I do like these better. They just fit my hand better, have a nicer feel to them, and I really like the locking mechanism on there, the safety. You just give this a push, and they come undone, ready to be used, and then just a little click up there. They're nice and easy. These broke, and I was devastated because I couldn't remember what they were called. So I went through, like, I think it was, like, 10 pages of clippers on Home Depot's website, and I found what I think are the, they, don't they look like they're the exact same thing, right? They function the same. They're the same dimensions, same looking screws, I mean, same everything except for, well, black and you can see they look a little bit different, different colors here, but same deal right here. They are Zenport. So if you, that's a thing from two years ago, if you were wondering, there's your update two years later, Zenport. 
Zenport, I think these are the one and a half inch, might be the two inch bypass pruners. It's not like uh, I think Felcos are overpriced or anything like that. I genuinely just like these better. These weren't cheap. I think they're 44, maybe $50. I can't remember. So that's not, there's not really much of a savings when you compare the two. This might be like 10 bucks cheaper, but they're very nice. You can replace the blades on them. They sharpen very easily. They rust quickly out here. We have a lot of human. You, you, does anybody care? You want to see the pumpkins, right? That's what we're here for. Now, technically, I could let these keep going. You can go in and prune off the bad leaves on the pumpkin vines and just leave the green ones. As long as you have enough green ones to keep things moving for there to be photosynthesis, that's totally an option. Want to clear a path. They're on my nerves. I'm done with having these all over the patio, so they just, they need to go. And uh, there's only like a few buds left on here, so I'm not going to get many more pumpkins out of them. The juice has to be worth the squeeze. You know what I mean? So I think it would be fun to get in here and just enjoy them. I'm going to avoid picking the ones that don't look like they're ripe. Most of these look like they are ripe and ready to go, though. They have a nice, nice orange color to them. The rind is stiff. There it is. That's the first one. What a beautiful pumpkin. So you see I push in on it. Doesn't really have much of an indent pretty firm doesn't sound hollow but these don't typically get much of a hollow sound to them I guess this one maybe could have gone a little bit too long potentially I'm not sure these are the uh, orangitas just like a, a big plump jack be little oh there's so many of them and tons of that powdery mildew Really? That's going right into the yard waste. Hopefully there isn't too much more of that going on in here. That, that one looks okay. This one's fine. Right, I'm only seeing one more that I think is ready to be picked and it's this one right here. There's still a few on here that needs some more time to ripen. So with this vine, I'm just going to cut it back, which is kind of risky to do. You know, these are a hollow vine. So when you make that cut at the end, you just sort of open the whole plant up for infection. but I'm over it. I want this thing off my patio. Now, change my mind. I cut them all out because they, well, we'll talk about it. I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up and get my patio back. So much gunk under here. Here's why I decided to go ahead and pull everything up when I got in there and was messing with it. I noticed that a lot of the vines were damaged. I don't know if you can really tell what's going on here, but so they're kind of just flaccid. At some point, somewhere, the main stem of one of the vines had been broken, probably from a dog toy getting thrown in there and having a dog run through it. No harm, no foul. Got lots of pumpkins. I can put these away and we can check out the harvest. I think those are some cute little pumpkins. The Orangitas, like I said, they're basically just a large Jack B. Little. They do have more of a rounded shape to them than you would get with the Jack B. Little. They're just slightly larger. Look at this one. See, they do have some heft to them. It's a nice little, I mean, they're just cute. So much fun picking your own produce, your own pumpkins. So looking at these, some of them could have maybe stayed a few days longer, but you saw the quality of those vines, right? Here's a one that I pulled off so you can have a better look at the issue I was talking about, that there wasn't going to be much ripening happening on anything like this. You see the stem, the vine right there? The vine was dying off, so. These aren't going to ripen any more from the vine than they are if I just were to cut them off. But here's one that just fell off on its own. So, you know, you harvest the pumpkins too soon, then they rot. You harvest them too late, then they rot. But there is a pretty big grace period for it. It's not something you have to have timed perfectly. You just want to make sure that they're the right color and nice and front. Look at that little heart. I didn't do that. That's just a piece of oxalis that broke off in there. So yeah, it would be fun if these were ripe and ready to go, but they are not, but I still picked them so you can see what I was talking about with, you know, if you can tell here, right? These are, wouldn't want to pick these. The rind is firm. They could be a little bit darker, but there does seem to be some variation here. My fingernails not making an indent, at least not much of one, and the stems are nice and firm. This one right here was the one where I was like, uh, I don't, I'm not totally certain what I should do with you, but it's firm. There aren't any soft spots on it. Look at the bottom, you can see where it was starting to orange out some more, so perhaps I, I mean, really, yeah, okay. I was gonna try and talk myself out of it. But I do think another week on the vine would have been great for this one, but I did that vine out of there. That vine was rotting and dying, y'all saw it. This is firm, the stem's firm. I'll just set it someplace where it's not too hot, not too cool, and let the air flow around them. They can do their 
curing thing that they need to do, and that they kind of need to do. I don't really get into all of that, but I don't usually grow big pumpkins. When I have grown the bigger ones, that it is a good idea to cut them and let them sit for a little bit to firm up. But you know, when I haven't done that, like when I've just totally skipped that step, it's always been fine. But I remember my grandparents talking about how you were supposed to do that, and I've heard other people talk about how you should cut them and let them sit for a little bit, but I don't, I've never done it. Comment down below, let me know what are, what are your best practices when it comes to harvesting your pumpkins? Do you just cut them when they seem ready like I do and go with the flow? I, that's, I don't know, it works for me so far. But again, I'm just doing the little pumpkins. Aren't they just stinking cute? My only issue with these is that, I say it all the time, the juice has to be worth the squeeze. There's only so much room in the garden to grow things. And I picked the Weeby Little and Orangitas, which are still doing their thing. That they might produce some fruit, I don't know. We will wait and see. But wait a minute, I think these are the Orangitas. Did I say that? I may have mixed up. The Weeby Littles aren't ready to be picked. These are the Orangitas. I'm pretty sure that's what I've been saying the entire time. With these, they were listed everywhere I was reading about them as having a nice small vine on them, being a more compact plant to grow. And yeah, I suppose, you know, in the realm of pumpkins, that vine wasn't horribly huge, but it wasn't the like four to six foot that I thought it was going to be. Those were easily eight foot vines. And uh, that was just taking up too much space. If I'm gonna have big vines out, then I'd rather be growing big pumpkins. However, they were pretty abundant, right? I mean, there's eight of them here. I already picked one, so there's nine. And there easily would have been another probably four if I hadn't had to cut the vine back earlier because there were some that were nice and small. So. Not bad, considering that it was only off of two vines. I got nine and potentially could have gotten, we'll just say a dozen total off two vines. Pretty good. And I probably would have gotten even more than that had I waited longer, but I didn't. I didn't see a reason to wait longer. Needed to get that vine out of there. I love them. They're cute. Weeby Littles. These are the orange juice. The Weeby Littles, they uh, look more like a traditional, like a miniature sugar pumpkin. I don't know if those are going to be doing anything as far as production goes, it's so late in the season and I haven't seen much of anything going on in here with them. And they have flowers, so that's good. Oh wait, no, no, there's fruit. Can we see it? Y'all see the you see um, fruit in there? Maybe? Possibly? I don't want to move it too much. It's right, it's right here. There. You, you can kind of see it, right? Yeah, there it is. I'm excited about that. So, all right, maybe hopefully we'll get one orangita off of here. One weeby little. Man, I don't know why I keep mixing those names up. Time will tell, but time's also running out. I have the patio back and a path to get back to where I need to dig for that magnolia, which I will do here, I don't know, in a few days. Not tonight. It's already getting dark out. I did want to make sure to show the start, the prequel of the amazing ginger show that's about to happen here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15. 15 of these buds are getting ready to open up. This one started this morning, or maybe it was yesterday. Absolutely huge. There's another one back there. Some in the window that are going to get going. All the green ones that don't have all the brown stuff on them. All of those. Look at them. Look at them. That's going to be beautiful. They always bloom outside of garden tour time, so I'm glad I remember to just pick up the camera and say, hey, look. Something beautiful is about to happen, and it's so early in the week. Hopefully by the end of this video, few more days will pass and be able to see how things have progressed and changed. There should be some more on this one over here. It looks like it has one, two, it only has like three on it. That's not as impressive. That's fun. Things have gotten off to an exciting start this week. New computer, got some space back on the patio and have a path to get back there to get that magnolia planted here in a few days. I'm gonna have to pull up a lot of the bikini teenies. I know it's going to break some people's hearts, but it's okay. They, they grow like weeds. Pulling a few of those up, by a few I mean a lot. A lot of those are coming up. It's okay. I would much rather have a like nice big evergreen sitting in that spot. Yeah, okay. That was fun. We can pick up and, I don't know, whenever. Whenever I'm ready to start digging that hole. Oh my god. This edited like butter. Look at how smooth. Frame by frame. No skipping, nothing. I already exported everything you saw up until this point, and it took like a minute and a half, something like that. Just, it's been a dream, loving this thing. Such a gem of a computer. That's, I know, nobody cares. I made the keyboard more of like a rainbow wave. You can't really, because it's light out. Can you see? See it? Look at that. Isn't that fun? It's many days 
later, there were a few complications. Apparently, I won't talk computers for very long, I promise. Apparently, there's been a compatibility issue with the uh, one of the graphic settings, one of the softwares that MSI has on their newer laptops and some new Intel updates. So this um, program right here, it's called True Color. Yeah, True Color. It's a nothing, but it's been nothing but a troublemaker. First couple of days that I had this thing, whenever I'd turn it on, I'd get a little pop-up thing that was like a notification about what to do if your screen washes out because of a True Color error, like if your screen turns white. And I was like, well, that's not happening, so not my problem, not something I have to worry about. And then Tuesday morning, there was an update, and then all of a sudden it, it became my problem. It took a day and a half to get it fixed, but I got it done. One thing I hadn't really taken into account with this beauty is that it is a very nice computer. And very nice computers are for people who are really good with computers. I'm not, I'm not that person. Working on it, but not there yet. Long ways to go, but after like many, many, many hours of going through backlogs and doing system reboots, I had to like do a hard uninstall or a clean uninstall and a clean install through like the black screen with the like the little cursor. I, I, I'm getting a little bit shaken just thinking about it. Got it done though, figured it out, uninstalled things, reinstalled things, changed some things out. It's been nice. So this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know. Here's what's going on in my head right now. I just spent a solid like seven, eight minutes talking about all the reasons that I should wait to plant the magnolia. And I've decided to just cut all that out because I'm going to at least try and get in here and get something done with this right now. The issue I was having just in summary was that there's not a lot of light over here right now because the banana cannas are so big and uh, things are pretty shaded. And the bikini teenies are just looking beautiful, but season's almost over. I could wait another three weeks for some frost and then I wouldn't feel bad about cutting these back. Ground will be plenty warm for several more weeks to get it planted. But I also really just kind of want to get this done or at least get the ball rolling. It is Friday. This video comes out tomorrow and I have a feeling I'm going to need a saw and a pickaxe to get this hole dug properly. So I don't really know what's going to happen right now, but uh, it started to drizzle. So I like was ready to set the tripod up, but y'all can't watch the fun process here. But we'll be back and hopefully at least something, maybe something will have happened. I don't know. I don't know. Look at the, aren't they looking great? It's been several days it's getting more flowers out of them. So we can get back to that later. I'm procrastinating. Let's get to work. It's actually pretty nice not having that over here anymore. It was really starting to block the view of the zinnias and all the prettiness. Oh, I don't know why I'm showing y'all all of that when there's much nicer things to look at. I did some pruning on the bananas because they were hitting me in the face and that drives me crazy. Oh, uh, what do we think? Isn't it just perfect? All right, not quite. Here's the thing to remember. Can't really plant a tree just based off of its best angle. Okay, that's actually exactly what you're supposed to do. However, it's supposed to be based off the best angle of the growth, not necessarily what I'm looking at with the foliage. I would have liked to have had this turned a little bit this way. It would have just looked nicer from the get-go. However, it's better to get this planted where those growths are going to have room to do their thing. If I turn this this way, then there's going to be a branch that will lead off into this side of the house. And that, well, that wouldn't make any sense at all. I would like for this to go ahead and have that upward growth with those sides that have space to spread out this way, not this way, not that way, this way, that way. So that's the angle it had to go in the ground at. I absolutely love it. I think that it's pretty well centered. The trunk on it is just a little bit wonked, but this is still plenty young enough that that will straighten itself out. So I'm not worried about that at all. I, I would, is it, is it? Yes. I spent a good amount of time like trying to line things up, right? You can see how that trunk kind of goes over and comes back, but I think that main growth is pretty straight. And you know, it's going to end up branching out in different ways and may look lopsided for several years. We want to give these time to establish themselves before I start pruning on them. And that's, well, that before pruning on them aesthetically, I should say I would want to let it fill out some more. The little gems aren't the fastest of growers, so it's just going to need some time before I start chopping on it. I also came in and cleared out a lot of the cannas, the ones that had already gone to flower and seed and were already starting to yellow out. And then, okay, I pruned up some other ones too. They were in the way and they were blocking the view. 
they were shading things quite a bit and I just, they needed to go. This is very full, it needed to be thinned out some. I left some of the lower growth with some leaves on them so some light can get down there and keep feeding that rhizome potentially. What you doing? You're not supposed to be in there. Turbo. I've talked a lot about the little gem magnolia, so I don't know how much I need to go into detail on it. I guess for anybody who hasn't watched the last few videos where I've been raving about them, the little gem zone seven and up, I'm in 6A, 6B, so they're kind of a roll the dice plant here. For the most part, they grow pretty well. Lots of people grow them, even though they're listed as a zone seven. They stay smaller, especially this far north. I've never seen them over 20 feet, so this is a perfect spot for it. It has roughly 15 feet between here and the foundation over there, which is good. You want to go by how far you'll let it spread, plus an additional like 50%. So it shouldn't be a problem. There's no foundation underneath that garage, so I'm not concerned about that at all. That's not going to be a problem with like roots or anything busting into the ground right there. The little gem has a smaller leaf on it and it flowers more freely. So it's, they generally put out flowers throughout the summertime. They have an awesome smell to them. You can see this one does have several buds on it and a flower that's opened up there. I can't quite get up there and I don't want to turn the camera like this because it's drizzling You get water on the lens. That's really about it in general tree planting stuff. Dug the hole about two to three times. The width went down nice and deep, backfilled it with the soil mixed with some compost. I did use a good amount of Biotone starter that does remind me, there is, okay. If you remember, if you're a longtime subscriber, then hopefully you'll remember that there used to be a saucer magnolia here, or a jade magnolia, a deciduous type that had gotten huge, it got very old, and it became infested with magnolia scale, which is a tricky thing to treat, or at least it was at the time. I had an arborist come out and we talked about different solutions to the problem and it basically came down to pump the ground around it full of a systemic insecticide you probably have to do it multiple times for a few years and that might work or spray it and have to do that many 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 times over the course of a year or two or three or cut it down so i mean you can see what i chose to do cut it down avoided the chemicals the tree was getting too big for this spot it was getting unruly needed to go. I wanted something evergreen over here anyways. That leads up to now, which is, I think we're at three or four years later. I honestly, 2020 is a blur. So I don't remember if that was cut down in 2020 or 2019. I feel like it was 2019 though. Either way, here's the thing. Planted a tree almost, not quite, but almost directly on top of an old tree. You really, it's like, you're not supposed to do that. Over a ground out stump, that is. So I think that this was, it looked like from the hole when I was digging down there, maybe two to two and a half feet over from the old ground out stump. It's looked like it had really done a good amount of decaying. The reason that it's not normally a good idea to plant a tree over a ground out stump is because you have to take into account what's going to happen with that stump that's down there. That's to decompose, and in order to decompose, we need nitrogen. Lots of nitrogen, lots of that biological process happening to help break that down. Lots of other good things happening too, lots of different types of fungi and things that keep things moving in the soil and eat that old wood up. But the concern that most people have, including myself, is that potentially going to end up not having enough nitrogen for the newly planted tree that's right above the other thing because all the resources are going to be down there chewing on that old wood. Like I said, it looked like it was fairly well eaten up. General rule of thumb, this is kind of an old school thing too. I remember this from when I was a kid. I don't, I need to look at, I'm sure things have changed by now, but it used to be like six to seven years was when they would say is the safe, like a lot of time to wait before planting over an old ground out stump. Otherwise it's best to plant out at least I believe it's three to five feet. I would say six feet just to be safe out away from the old stump. This, this soil's nice and rich. It's nice and black. Everything that's over here are nitrogen hogs. My soil gets amended two to three times a growing season with compost and earthworm casting. So I'm not really all that concerned about nitrogen depletion. And I had things planted here this year and the year before because I was curious about the soil quality. And the elephant ears that I pulled up from here, those colocaceas, you saw them before I did it, they are the biggest ones I've ever grown in my life. They were rooted fairly far down in there. You can see them, they go 
and I don't, this isn't really a helpful description, but they're a good seven to seven and a half feet, slightly stretched because of the angle of the light, but still massive. They don't usually grow, like they usually stay more like this for me. So I'm gonna say it's the soil over here. I think it's fine. It is a slight risk, but it should be okay as long as you keep amending and keep adding and pay attention to, or I should say not pay attention to. Well, yeah, pay attention to. Losing my words here. Watch the foliage, make sure everything stays nice and deep green and know what to do should things start to lighten up or the tree just kind of start to go downhill. In which case, go ahead and lift it up and move it or just stay on top of amending and liquid fertilizing, give it quick bursts of the nitrogen. That's not the best thing for root development, but it's a good thing to help green things up, that plus iron. I don't anticipate any of those things being an issue, but I wanted to clarify just for those of you who remember that there was a tree here and I just put a tree almost right on top of it. It's been a few years. Other things have grown in this spot. I amend my soil very, very, very heavily. Things are very dark, rich, and organic over here. Lots of organic materials for the plants to break down. So it should be okay. I'm really happy about this. It's been a few years that this spot's been empty. It's been bugging me. I've Every single winter for like, since that magnolia got cut down, you've seen me, if you've been watching for a long time, I'll be inside the house just... So upset about the view because in the winter time or late fall really just several weeks away none of this is here it's just barren just dirt plus the sable miners and some other dwarf palms that are down low that palm tree is gone there's no leaves on the tree so it is just a straight view of brown trees in the back of all my neighbors houses it's it's very unpleasant and i usually put up curtains now there's something evergreen to look out through the window it's not going to add much privacy for a few years but i'm fine with that i think it looks great just like this, just how it is. It's just the perfect little gem, little gem magnolia. And it smells so good, so fragrant. I do also just got startled by the dog. I like the way the ginger caught like all the compliments that are happening over here between the bikini teenies, the gingers, that dark glossy foliage with the brownish tones on the undersides. Did you even see it? There you go, kind of, is that better? Yeah, that's better. The red of the banana can is, I like the color flow here. Needed something darker in the background with those banana cannas, which I do love. I think they are, they're a bit much, but I do love them. I think it's better that they've been thinned out some. I really don't need them coming very far forward or over. Just a little patch right there to help shade things during the summertime, that, that's it. They're good right there. Aren't things looking nice? Find us all the stuff I need to clean up, but all the gingers, all their flowers popping open. Not a lot's happened. It got pretty warm for a few days and it was really nice. It was like 97. And 95 for the last day of summer and the day before and then the first day of fall is like 52 and freezing i got the heater cranked up in this thing It'll be a nice fun steamy swim tonight great way to kick off the first fall weekend of 2022 what do y'all have planned yeah that's it i'm done i got a lot of stuff left to do today before the weekend starts and get back to a normal pace here hopefully in the next week or so so hope everybody's doing well comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody Having fun with your fall things. I'm not typically that into fall, but like the chilly nights and I'm smelling like people's fires burning and it is starting to kind of ignite a thing in me. And I'm, I don't know, I'm not hating it. And I've got on pants and a hoodie. It's just cozy. I'm digging the coziness. So yeah. Oh, I said I was going to go. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life. And everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, keep on growing. Bye bye.